Electricity is at work all around us. In our offices, our cities, our schools, parks and homes, and in nature. I can't believe that Benjamin Franklin was out in a storm like this just to do experiments with electricity. I'm surprised he didn't get hurt. You're right. Electricity can be dangerous if not used properly, but it can also be our friend. Whoa, who said that? You're Benjamin Franklin. I have to study by you. You're part of my homework. Me? Yes. You're one of the greatest contributors to the study of electricity. Hey. Maybe you could help me with my homework. I need an adult to help with the experiments. Well, why not? Maybe I could learn something, too. Well, electricity has certainly come a long way since I first experimented with it. Okay. First assignment. Describe electricity. Electricity is a form of energy. It can give us light and heat. And it can produce a force that can make things move. That lightning sure made me move. <laughs> what is lightning, anyway? Lightning is a form of electricity that exists in nature. In my kite experiment, I proved that it is an electrical current. The moving energy, or current, jumps between two clouds, or within the same cloud, and sometimes it flows between the clouds and the Earth. But what causes it? A simple explanation is that the heat and light we call lightning is really just a giant spark. You can experience a smaller version of the same kind of electrical energy by rubbing something, uh, like your cat, and then touching something metallic, like a doorknob. Oh, I know that. That's static electricity. There's a cool experiment in my book about static electricity. Shall we do it? It sounds like fun. Here's a balloon, Ben. Now try sticking it to the wall. Ah. Doesn't stick. Rub it in one direction and try sticking it to the wall again. It sticks. You could pick up bits of paper with it, too. Whoa, that's cool. This next experiment is almost the same. Let's charge up these balloons on the cloth and then hang them on this rod. They're pushing apart from each other. Will they push or pull anything else? There's another experiment we can do to find out. What do we need? Some running water and another balloon. First, we need something to catch the water. The pot. Hmm. Next, I'll hold the charged balloon next to the stream of water. Hey, the water moved. Electricity really does move things. It's like a magnet. Did you know that things can either have a positive, negative, or neutral charge? Mostly things are neutral. They don't pull or push each other. Those balloons, uh, once we've rubbed them, have a negative charge. It's like we rubbed something away, and now it's trying to pull it back. That's what makes them attract other things? The push or pull force is known as a positive or negative charge, a minus or a plus. Things with a negative charge repel other negatively charged things. Things that have like or similar charges push each other away. They repel each other. Things that have unlike charges pull towards each other. They attract each other. That's like a magnet. That's right. Electrical charges are related to magnetism, but they're not exactly the same. Electrical attraction and repulsion comes from electrical charges. The magnetic properties of electricity can make things move. Electricity does a lot of work for us. Hmm? It gives us light, heat, and power, like we said. Hmm. But it also gives us communication, like the TV, the radio, the telephone, and computers. I don't know what we would do without electricity. We may have struck the power lines. Uh, wh what do you mean by power lines? The power lines carry the electricity to our house. But where does it come from? It comes from a power station, where they start the electric charge flowing through special wires that bring it right inside. 
We plug into the power source with cords from our appliances, and that is how we get our electrical power. So, something stopped the flow of electricity through the wires. But it never stops for long. Someone will be out there repairing the damage soon. <laughs> well, in the meantime, perhaps we could do another experiment. First, let's put the flashlight over here. Would you like to see how electricity flows? That's a good place to start. Well, the first thing we need is a source of power that we can safely experiment with. Wow! The battery. Next, we need a light, a switch, and a conductor. What do you mean by a conductor? Well, electricity won't flow through just anything. A conductor is a material that allows electricity to flow through it, like this copper wire. Now, let's attach one end of the copper wire to the battery and the other end to the lamp. Nothing happens. That's because we need to complete the circuit. Oh, right. So when we press this switch, the circuit is complete, and the electricity is allowed to flow. This is a simple circuit. Ah! Just as we've completed our circuit, someone has completed the circuit to the house. We're using a metal wire here as our conductor. Do you think we could use this piece of string? Well, let's find out. Nope. Uh, what about that piece of paper? Let's try. Nope. Hmm. In my class at school, we learned that something that doesn't conduct electricity very well is called an insulator. That's right. An insulator prevents the flow of electricity. The copper wire is insulated on the outside, except here at the ends where we need it to touch the battery. Inside the insulation, the copper wire is carrying the electricity. A series circuit is connected in one continuous line. You can add more batteries to increase the power. You can add more lights as well. If one light goes out, the circuit will be broken. There is another kind of circuit called a parallel circuit. Parallel means the wires run side by side. In this parallel circuit, each power source and each light bulb is attached to the circuit in a separate line. You can remove one of the lights without breaking the circuit. You don't get more power if you add more batteries, but the batteries will last longer. Now, what 